Hey everyone, Be History here. Today, we embark on a journey into the heart of ancient Iberia, amidst its wild beauty and fierce spirit, to discover the remarkable tale of a man whose name would forever echo as a rallying cry for freedom, Viriatus. Imagine young Viriathus, born into the rugged terrain of ancient Lusitania, where the golden sun bathed the rolling hills in warmth. As a shepherd boy, he spent his days tending to his flock, learning the secrets of survival amidst the whispering winds and towering mountain peaks. Guided by the ancient wisdom of his people, Viriathus forged a deep connection with the land, honing his skills in tracking, finding shelter, and understanding the rhythms of nature. But a storm brewed on the horizon, a dark cloud threatening to shatter this peaceful life. The Roman Empire, hungry for expansion, set its sights on the Iberian Peninsula. Viriathus witnessed firsthand the brutality of conquest, the oppression and suffering inflicted on his people. This sparked a fire within him, a deep yearning for freedom, and a fierce determination to resist the chains Rome sought to bind them with. The Roman advance surged steadily into the Iberian Peninsula during the 3rd century BC. By 197, they had solidified their presence by carving provinces out of the southeastern coast, marking significant progress toward Lusitanian territories. The tribes clung fiercely to their autonomy, secured through treaties, but they proved as fragile as parchment in the face of Roman ambition. As Roman tax collectors descended upon Lusitania, their demands echoed through valleys, disrupting the familiar barter system and swiftly supplanting traditional exchange methods with silver denarii, the currency of Rome. Once free farmers shouldered heavy tributes, their yields shrinking as Roman coffers grew fat, rich mines, once a source of prosperity, became targets for plunder by Roman overseers who drove the populace to extract gold and copper, fueling Rome's insatiable war machine. In 152 BC, a deceitful peace treaty forged by Marcus Attilius ignited a firestorm, branding the Lusitanians as conquered subjects. The terms were so oppressive that rebellions erupted as soon as Attilius returned to Rome, fueled not just by Roman cruelty, but also by resentment towards collaborators. The seeds of defiance had been sown, and the fight for Lusitania's independence was about to erupt. In 151 BC, betrayal hung heavy in the air as Servius Galba, a Roman praetor, seized an opportunity for personal gain by allying with another Roman governor. Together, they orchestrated a brutal scorched earth campaign aimed at depopulating Lusitania, leaving a lasting stain on Roman history. Then, amidst the chaos and despair, Galba offered a glimmer of hope, safe passage and new lands. However, it was a cruel deception. Unaware of the trap, thousands of Lusitanians, including a young Viriathus, gathered at the designated location, their anticipation mingled with fear. Little did they know that Roman soldiers had surrounded them, sealing their fate. What followed was a horrific massacre, with estimates suggesting that 30,000 Lusitanian men, women, and children perished, leaving the land ravaged and the air thick with the acrid scent of smoke and blood. The anguished cries of the wounded reverberated through the valleys, creating a haunting melody of despair. From this darkness emerged a spark of defiance, Three years later, a young Viriathus, forever marked by the horror, reappeared. Fueled by vengeance and a burning desire to free his people, he took action. Using his knowledge of the land and unwavering will, Viriathus united the remaining Lusitanians, marking a turning point in their struggle for freedom. The War of Fire, an epithet coined by the esteemed Greek historian Polybius, etched a permanent mark in Lusitanian history. Guided by Viriathus, this conflict transcended mere personal ambition or vengeance. As Cassius Dio observed, Viriathus embodied a blend of martial fervor and strategic brilliance, renowned not only for his love of battle, but also for his tactical genius. In 149 BC, 
Viriathus emerged from the shadows to lead a hastily assembled force of ten thousand against the juggernaut of the Roman Republic. Lightly armed and lacking in formal training, these Iberian warriors stood in stark contrast to the iron-clad legions that had conquered much of the known world. When a group of Lusitanians found themselves trapped by the Romans, they were on the verge of surrendering. But Viriathus, ever suspicious of Roman promises, devised a daring escape plan. His fiery speech, brimming with defiance and a thirst for liberty, rekindled the spark within the weary Lusitanians. They saw not just a leader, but a reflection of their own burning desire for freedom. Imagine the scene. Viriathus, his voice booming like a thunderstorm, rallied the trapped Lusitanians. In a stroke of tactical brilliance, Viriathus ordered his warriors to form a battle line against the Romans. But just as they charged forward, he executed a daring maneuver. He swiftly dispersed his army, strategically redeploying them at other key locations. This unexpected tactic, perfectly suited to his smaller, agile force, left the Romans bewildered. Their formations crumbled as waves of soldiers, unsure of their target, broke apart and fled in disarray. Viriathus, with a thousand chosen men in a strategic position, held the ten thousand strong Roman army in check, ready to attack if they pursued. Once the remaining Lusitanians had vanished like smoke through the trees, he and his thousand men escaped as well. This brilliant maneuver not only saved all the Lusitanian soldiers, but also secured Viriathus the unwavering loyalty of his people. He then orchestrated a decisive attack against Caius Vitilius in the mountains near Tribola. Recognizing the Roman superiority, he employed guerrilla tactics and sprang imaginative ambushes. Picture the Romans, their polished armor gleaming under the Iberian sun, marching confidently through a narrow mountain pass, when suddenly the earth erupted in a cacophony of shouts and the glint of iron. Viriathus's Lusitanians, nimble and fierce, charged with iron spears, their battle cries echoing through the canyon. The Romans, trapped and disoriented, were cut down in droves. In this unexpected onslaught, Vitilius himself fell, along with four thousand of his soldiers. In response, the Celtiberians, another Iberian tribe, were hired to attack the Lusitanians, but they too were destroyed. Following this engagement, the Lusitanians clashed with the armies of Gaius Plautius, Claudius Unimanus, and Gaius Nigidius, all of whom were defeated. Faced with a seemingly invincible foe who refused to be defeated, Rome sent one of its best generals, Quintus Fabius Maximus Aemilianus, with 15,000 soldiers and 2,000 cavalry. Despite accomplishing the retreat of the Lusitanians in an initial victory, Aemilianus suffered significant losses in subsequent battles, depleting most of his reinforcements, leading him to return to Rome without having taken down Viriathus. This setback marked the beginning of a costly drain on Rome's resources, characterized by dwindling supplies and a sharp decline in legionary recruitment. This grueling stalemate sparked heated debates within the Senate. The relentless war's high cost and ineffectiveness, casting doubt on Roman governance in Iberia, fueled whispers of re-evaluating imperial expansion and military strategy within the halls of power. The Roman Senate, desperate for a solution, dispatched Servilianus to Iberia, but his campaign was short-lived. Near Sierra Marina, the Romans blundered into a cleverly concealed Lusitanian ambush, enduring yet another devastating loss. In stark contrast to his Roman adversaries, who frequently employed brutality, Viriathus displayed exceptional mercy. He chose to spare the lives of Servilianus and his soldiers, extending an offer of freedom in return for a peace treaty acknowledging Lusitanian sovereignty over their land. This agreement was later ratified by the Roman Senate, and Viriathus was declared Amicus Populi Romani, an ally of the Roman people. As the flames of war subsided, Viriathus stood on the precipice of a new peaceful era. However, unbeknownst to him, a shadowy figure lurked in the corridors of power, plotting his downfall. While the peace treaty brought a precarious calm, 
it rankled Quintus Servilius Capio, who was driven by ambition and a thirst for glory. He saw it as a stain on Roman honor and an obstacle to his own aspirations. With persuasive speeches laden with patriotism, Capio swayed the Senate to grant him the authority to declare war on the Lusitanians. Viriathus, knowing of the declaration of war and placing his trust in his advisers, Audax, Ditalcus, and Minurus, who had fought valiantly by his side for years, dispatched them as envoys to negotiate peace with Capio. Despite Viriathus's hopes for a diplomatic resolution, his advisers, wearied by years of conflict and swayed by the allure of Capio's promises, succumbed to the persuasive tactics of the Roman agents. Beneath the shroud of night, they stealthily advanced toward Viriathus's tent, where he lay slumbering, oblivious to the treachery lurking in his midst. Each step was a torment, their hearts heavy with the weight of their betrayal. The air was thick with tension as they stood before the entrance, their trembling hands betraying their inner turmoil. Within the confines of the tent, once a sanctuary of camaraderie and solidarity, now hung a suffocating silence, broken only by the hushed whispers of the conspirators. With a shared heavy glance, they braced themselves for the act that would forever stain their souls. One of them, his face a mask of conflicting emotions, stepped forward. Heaving a ragged breath, he raised a glinting blade, its edge reflecting a sliver of doubt in his eyes. Then, with a swift, agonizing plunge, he extinguished the life that had for so long embodied Lusitanian defiance. Viriathus, the symbol of resistance, fell silent, leaving behind a chilling echo that would reverberate throughout the Lusitanian heartland. After their treacherous actions, confident of their reward, the traitors approached Caipio the next day, only to be met with a response that echoed the ruthless pragmatism of Roman politics. It has never pleased the Romans, he declared with a sneer, for a general to be slain by his own soldiers. Dreams of riches vanished, replaced by a chilling realization of their folly. Capio's words left them burdened with the guilt of their actions, a weight that would surely draw the wrath of their own people. However, Capio's plan backfired as well, as after traveling to Rome, poetic justice prevailed when the Senate, unwilling to celebrate Capio's treachery, denied him the triumph he so desperately craved. Viriathus's assassination sent shockwaves through the Lusitanian resistance, threatening to engulf the movement in grief and despair. His loss was profound. Viriathus wasn't just a leader, but also a symbol of hope. Yet, in the face of this devastation, the Lusitanian spirit remained unbroken. Under the leadership of Tautilus, a trusted lieutenant who enjoyed the people's confidence, the Lusitanians continued to fight tirelessly to secure their land, stoking further resentment. Rebellions continued to flare up for decades, a testament to the enduring struggle of the Lusitanian people against their oppressors. It wasn't until nearly a century later, under Augustus, that total pacification of Lusitania was achieved. Viriathus's legacy transcends the battlefields of Lusitania. Throughout his campaigns, he suffered defeat at the hands of the Romans only once, solidifying his reputation as one of the most accomplished generals to resist Rome's expansion. But his influence extends far beyond the annals of history, reaching even the celestial realms. In 2019, a newly discovered planet received the honor of being named Viriato, immortalizing his name among the stars. This act serves as a testament to a man whose aspirations soared beyond earthly bounds, solidifying his legacy across the vast expanse of the cosmos. Viriathus's story serves as an enduring testament to the human spirit. His name continues to inspire generations, a symbol of courage, defiance, and the unwavering pursuit of liberty. He reminds us that even the most formidable empires can be challenged by the will of a determined people, leaving behind a legacy of unwavering resistance forever revered and celebrated. Thank you for joining us on this captivating journey through history. 
If you enjoyed this episode, be sure to like, share, and subscribe to Be History for more riveting tales from the past. See you on the next video.